What I love about chemistry are lots of things. The first thing I love the most about chemistry is that it explains how things work all around us. Everything that surrounds us, the clothing, the materials, the food, and everything, the environment, everything is based on chemistry. So if you know things about chemistry, you know a lot around what surrounds you. And this is what interests me the most understanding things that surrounds me and how it works. Mm -hmm. Any examples of that? Okay, for an example, I'm teaching uh, environmental chemistry. So it is important to understand that everything that you are releasing into the atmosphere finally comes down on you. So it means that everything is interacting with one another the gases, the water, the soil, and everything. So all relates together. For Everybody is talking about greenhouses, gases, and the way it heats up the atmosphere. But at the same time, it does influence precipitation. So the snow, the rain, it means also that it influences the way the water penetrates the soil and the drainage and the fields and every time it means that you have to take into account that what you release as greenhouse effect gases will eventually run down or on how you, the crops are being grown or things like that. So this is the kind of interaction that chemistry allows you to understand. Very complex system that basically are simple but linked together and th that linkage is extremely important. One of the biggest challenge of the students that they encounter when they started to learn about chemistry is that basically when we are talking about atoms and molecules, we don't see them. Well, not until very recently it was impossible to look at an atom. Now it's possible. But there are brand new technologies developed by IBM uh, in Germany and so on. But basically, not being able to see the molecules, to see the atoms, is the, the foremost brick wall that the students are encountering. So they have to make Im their imagination work and imagine and see the molecules in their head. And this is the most difficult part. Imagine seeing things and we basically fall down to, you know what? the Greek concepts of the atoms, and we fall back to the history of sciences. And interestingly, all these things are linked together, but basically not being able to see the atoms and, mole and molecules, this is the biggest challenge. And trust me, for lots of students, everything stops there. They see a piece of wood, they see a, a sheet of metal or a sheet of paper, but they don't see the molecules that compose them. And interestingly, this is where the new technologies come in. For instance, it's possible by using a high-tech computer that actually are available right now to image the chemical processes, to image for the students how the atom works, how they react together, how the molecules are being changed, and how the materials are being constructed. And now when they see that, immediately they start to understand. The brick wall falls down and they can go further. That's, that's the main point, I, I believe. What are the opportunities that you can have with a degree in chemistry? That's an interesting question. Usually people start to think, well, the only thing I can do will be to teach. But that, that is not all that there is. First of all, you can work as a full-time chemist. All the uh, metallurgical industry, pharmaceutical industry, all the transformation industry do hire chemists and they are an important part of all the industries in Canada. For instance, if, uh, if you want to go to the pulp and paper industry or the, uh, the wood components industry, you have lots of chemistry being involved there that you can analyze and research. The same thing goes for uh, everything that involves, for, for example, water and fishery. All the pollutants that go into the water and that can affect the quality of the food that will be processed from, from the fish and everything. It's an important part and a chemist has an important role to play in that. Also, transformation industry, the electronic industry. Lots of chemical dosage, chemical experiments. 
and very precise measurements of all the contaminants are important. For instance, we were talking about computers. Every computer component is, is to be very specifically manufactured to a precise degree of chemical composition. And a chemist comes into work with that. Um, of course, teaching. Teaching chemistry is something extremely important. But all the industry that surrounds us, including also pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical industry has the, uh, used thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars per year to develop new drugs and things like that. But they have to be precisely uh, analyzed and synthesized. All synthetic drugs involve organic chemists or physical chemists or analytical chemists, which are all different uh, options you can have in chemistry. So there are lots and lots of opportunities. Uh, I'm coming from the province of Quebec and what we learned about two years ago was that in 10 years from now, we will be lacking chemists in Quebec. There will be a huge opportunity to work, for instance. And a, a friend of mine uh, in Alberta told me uh, a couple of weeks ago that it is the same thing going on in Alberta. It probably it's the same thing all around the country. People are actually are choosing much more health sciences and not material and pure and applied sciences. So there's a lot of opportunity for chemists to work everywhere in Canada, actually.